Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. We are here today to talk about our review of the GeForce GTX Titan Z graphics card that is this beast sitting right here in front of us. This is a, a dual GPU card, two GK110 GPUs. Mm -hmm. So essentially the same GPU that's in the 780 Ti and in the uh, Titan Black graphics card, but you've got two of them on here. This is a $3,000 video card though, selling today for $29.99 on Newegg and Amazon. Um, it has some impressive specifications. You've got 5,760 combined CUDA cores. You've got 12 gigabytes of combined memory, six per GPU. That memory is running at seven uh, gigahertz, mm -hmm. same clock speed that's on the 780Ti and on the Titan Black. Um, 8.1 theoretical teraflops of compute performance. Right? All right, so how's that compared to these guys? Like, how much are these guys? Uh, those are about five, five teraflops each. So you're getting uh, a little bit more out of those combined than you would these. So these are the GTX 780 Ti's, and these are single GPU cards that sell for 650 bucks a piece. So you can get those for significantly less. You can get a pair of those for significantly less than you can get here. You can get three of them for less than you can get yeah. this. Um, now the difference is between what is in the Titan Z and what is in the 780 Ti is you get double precision compute performance in this, which is, you know, not for gaming, it's mm -hmm. not going to improve gaming, but it's really meant for CUDA developers, it's meant for supercomputing applications, and I think that audience will probably love this card, because you're getting a lot of compute capability in a fairly dense sure. unit. Um, you also get 6 gigs of memory per GPU mm -hmm. on this card, you're getting 3 gigs of memory per GPU on this. Uh, if you go up to the Titan Black, which is a single GPU card, you'll get 6 gigs of memory on each of those. Um, I mean... The killer part for this is really the price point. If we look at the AMD Radeon 295 X2, which yep. we have sitting here, this is AMD's most recent dual GPU graphics card. It's built on two of its Hawaii GPUs. It has 5,632 stream processors. So, uh, but they're running at a thousand megahertz, actually a little bit over, like I think a thousand twenty megahertz on those. Which is interesting because the 295 X2 is actually a little bit faster than a pair of 290X cards. Okay. Right? The Titan Z can't make that claim. The Titan Z is a little bit slower than a pair of 780 Ti's or a pair of Titan Blacks. And that reason is really comes down to clock speed. The uh, uh, base clock speed of the Titan Z is 705 megahertz with a boost clock of 876. All right. And if you compare that to the GTX 780 Ti, its base clock is 875. Hmm. So you're talking about a 170 megahertz difference in right. base clock from this part to this part, right? That's and that's going to show up in games, right? You're going to see that difference, and in games where um, the GPUs are are running very heavily loaded, they're getting hotter, and the clock speeds have to come down some. That's going to, you know, turn into five to ten to sometimes twelve or thirteen percent performance differences between this card and actually a pair of 780 Ti SLI cards where they're actually a little bit faster. So. Is that a power thing? I mean, what's the, like, why is this card able to pull that off? It is uh, power and heat, right? Oh. So if you look at the 295X2, it has this. Yep. It has a radiator, right? So it's a 500 watt TDP part, and it has uh, <laughs> 500 watts, say that again. Yeah, that's... It's a 500 watt TDP part, and it has a self contained water cooling loop on both of the GPUs. This okay. card has a TDP of 375 watts. Because of the cooling, most likely. Right. So there's 125 watts difference. And that's kind of the interesting thing here is. AMD took a lot of chances. They did things that I don't think NVIDIA planned for them to do. Mm -hmm. Both of these cards were being developed you know, side by side. Uh, the Titan Z was announced at the end of March. Right. This came out in April, and then this actually came out in May. So from the time Titan Z was actually announced, for, before it went on sale, mm -hmm. the 295X2 was released at half the price, uh, taking chances, uh, taking chances like including a water cooler, how would people react to that, right. uh, overdrawing PCI Express power specs, right? Mm -hmm. by spec, with two 8-pin power connectors, which is what both of these cards have, you should only actually be able to draw 375 total watts. Okay. Right, 75 from the PCI Express bus, 150 from each 8-pin connector. AMD said, ah, those are recommendations, and if you have the appropriate power supply, there's no reason why you can't draw more than that. And sure. it's true. We haven't had any stability problems with their card. Um, but it is, it's just a difference of design decision, right? Yeah. Um, I think, aesthetically, the Titan Z is the better-looking card, um, and okay. it, is, it is a little bit of a concern for some people. This is a three-slot design. Mm -hmm. It's going to take up three slots yep. in your system. This one's only two. Yep, but, that, but the AMD card is actually an inch and a half longer. 
So that's mm -hmm. 12 and a half inches long, and a Titan Z is 11 inches long. So in terms of small form factor cases, I think there's going to be instances where the Titan Z will fit, but the 295X2 could yeah, not. Especially with the core. But then other way around as well. Right. If it's a if it has length, but it doesn't have room for a third slot mm -hmm. cooler, like maybe a mini ITX system might not, um, that would be the concern there. That's all aside from the fact that that card is cost twice as much right. as this card. Yes. $3,000, $1,500, $1,300 $1, for a pair of GTX 780 Ti's. When we looked at performance, right, so we did, we did our normal round of benchmarks. You've got 3D Mark, you've got uh, all the games, Battlefield 4 and Crisis 3. Right. Um, almost across the board, the AMD card is faster. Okay. Uh, and it's faster by slim margins, a couple of percent, to large margins, 25 and 30 percent, mm -hmm. depending on the game. Uh, and a lot of that has to do with AMD's um, revitalization of their multi-GPU technology when they've fixed frame pacing, mm -hmm. which is required because this is a crossfire embedded graphics right. card. That helps them out a lot. Now, the SLI is still doing quite well on it, but AMD has caught up. And so the extra performance that you get out of the 295X2 really makes it uh, hard to argue against it from a any kind of performance per dollar. Yeah, I mean, can you metric. can you crossfire two of these? You can. Uh, actually, no. Uh, yes, you can on that. We did. We did a quad. So you could buy two of these for the price of that. You could. You could buy two of those. You make you make sure you have a fifteen hundred watt power supply yeah, to do yeah. that. You need a lot of power. Yeah. You need a lot of power to do that. Whereas you could run two of these in uh, quad SLI as well, and you wouldn't need you wouldn't as need much. A 1500 but watt power but supply. you wouldn't get as much performance. You would not. Hmm. You would not. Um, so. It's, it's, it, there are some positives to the Titan Z as well. We talked about power consumption, right? Mm -hmm. If you look at our power consumption graphs, I think you'll see 150 watt draw difference, like at the wall, okay. between this card and the between the 295X2 and the Titan Z. Titan Z is much more power efficient, mm -hmm. but you're getting less performance. So in terms of power efficiency, performance per watt, right? It's probably pretty equal, right? Okay. You're just you're just drawing more watts for that extra power over here than right. you are over here. If you're concerned about noise levels, um, the you know with the Titan Z you only have a single fan, mm -hmm. single single center mounted fan, and you've got large heat sinks on there, and it's actually fairly quiet. Uh, with with the two nine five X two, you have to deal with uh, the center mounted fan. Yeah, that has a fan and two a pumps core, and the radiator fan. Right. right. So you've got a couple of fans and two radiators or uh, one radiator, two pumps. That you have to deal with noise levels from. Yeah, and the pumps are integrated. Yes, looks like they're on, on the, the heat sinks. Yeah. yeah. So uh, under load, this is definitely louder than the Titan Z. Okay. Uh, under, at idle, it's pretty close, but the Titan Z is still much quieter. Mm -hmm. And the two seven eight Ti's in SLI more closely mirror the sound performance of the two ninety five X two. So there are some upsides to the design that Nvidia went with with the Titan Z, um, but I think they're they're very specific, and I don't think. Uh, I still think there are users that are going to buy Titan Z. Sure. And, uh, they're going to sell them, right? Uh, just like when Titan came out and Titan Black came out and we thought these are overpriced uh, for what you got performance-wise, NVIDIA has no problem selling those parts. And f depending on how many they make, they could sell through this. They're going to sell them to system resellers. They're going to... Mm -hmm. People who are okay sen spending seven, $8,000 on a gaming machine mm -hmm. for somebody else to build, um, and they, you know, just they can pop one of those in Yeah, there, if they right? want to go GeForce, then that's probably they the have, way to if go. If they have GeForce brand... You know, that they recognize it and they want to continue using it, they yeah. might just go, well, whatever, $3,000 is not a big deal. For people who, it's kind of, it's difficult to have the conversation about people who are concerned about um, value, right? <laughs> even when you're talking about a $1,500 video card. You're right. Um, but if you are somebody who would get a pair of 780 Ti cards in SLI, for example, and there's a lot of those out there, mm -hmm. you're in that range of thirteen to $1,500. Right. So now, this... Versus that, you mentioned you can get two 295X2s for the same price. Um, that's a huge difference. Yeah. That's a huge perf uh, potential performance advantage. And that ends up being like four of these. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it's a really interesting thing. There's other uh, differences be uh, bes between these two kind of dual GPU cards. Mm -hmm. The Titan Z only has a single display port output, which means it can only support one 4K display hmm. on it, which is a little bit disappointing. Um, the 295X2 has four mini display port outputs. Yep. Right, so it can actually run four of those 4K single stream monitors that are starting to come out and become relatively inexpensive. So you may even, I know it sounds silly, but you may even better off, be better off with the, if yeah. you want GeForce, yep. SLI pair of these if you have dual 4K. If you want to go GeForce 4K surround, you'd be better off getting three 780 Ti's because then you'll have a DisplayPort connection for each. Right. And 
you'll be at you know under two thousand hmm. dollars, and you'll have better performance than you would out of a of Titan Z. But That's now you've true. got to make sure you've got the power supply for it, you've got the case for it, you've got the motherboard for it. Right. There's a lot of other things that go into it. Yeah. There are advantages of a, a single card implementation of dual GPU that you lose out on when you go into into multiple cards. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's what I would love to see Nvidia do. With this, I, I like. I love the platform. The design is great. Um, the acoustics are awesome. Performance could use a boost, right. right? What I would love to see is them disable double precision capability on the GPUs mm -hmm. and offer this same card essentially at a lower price. Give us six gigs of memory instead of twelve, maybe, right. and run those as seven eighty Ti GPUs instead of Titan GPUs, right? Just that floating point performance difference. Yeah. And sell it for fifteen hundred bucks. Yeah. So make it a pair of these. Yeah. Instead of a pair of Titan Blacks. Right. And maybe they'll do that. I don't really know if they will, because um, the, as a company, that's kind of you know you're swallowing your pride, you're eating crow, because you came out out of the block in March declaring this the best, highest performing graphics card in the world. And yeah. Before you could get it for sale, get it on store shelves, AMD released this, and. It is the highest performing single graphics card in the world. That's true. It's it's not perfect. It's got its flaws: power consumption, noise, heat, and all that. But uh, for gamers that are concerned with performance per dollar, I mean, performance per dollar in a fifteen hundred fifteen hundred dollar part, that's the way to go. Well, with your hypothetical product you were just talking about there, I think it still needs a second display port. Yeah, I would also like to see them change that output configuration at this point. Yeah. Uh, when when this when this output configuration was launched, full size display port, full size HDMI, two DVI, that made the most sense. Yeah. Uh, as these 4K displays now are hitting 650 bucks, yeah. it makes sense to maybe move more towards uh, what AMD is doing with the with the more mini display port connections mm -hmm. uh, as well. So, uh, if you want more information on this, we have all of our benchmarks, all of our power consumption numbers, all of our uh, noise testing numbers. Mm -hmm in the review at PCPro.com, and uh, I'm really interested to hear what everybody has to say. I, I think it's a pretty universal answer that the Titan Z is not a good selection for people that are only interested in gaming. Again, you know, the CUDA developers, the, the supercomputing market, they're going to eat this card up. I don't think that's a problem. Yep. Uh, but for gamers, it's hard to justify this. It's pretty much impossible to justify this over the other options on the table even, NVIDIA or AMD. Right. So uh, check out the review. It's at PCPro.com, and thanks for watching.